Chronicler Adline is now in the game. You can log in and obtain this champion. All you have to do is log in for seven days. If you log in for even 14 days, you get extra rewards that comes along with her. Maybe a perfect soul with other events that it's coming along. Let's see. But in this video, I want to take a closer look at her skills to find out where I will be using this champion in the early game or all the way till the end game. We we'll talk about you know the places that she would shine mostly. Hopefully, that inspires you to use this champion when you get her. I'll also be taking a look at um, this page that Raid created for the second legendary champion, the fusion for the month of May, and we'll take a look at his skills. Um, what's his name again? Max something. We'll take a closer look at that champion skills where the community is voting for the type of skills that he should have and a unique new buff that he comes along with it for one of his skills that you might want to vote for. So let's head straight to this first um, legendary champion that you can get for seven days and see what is new about her. They've created this page for us so we can take a closer look at her before you find her in your game. The first thing you see she's legendary support champion of course and um, she's... We're not talking about her character design. Let's head into to the A1. Straight up, you see this champion has an A1 that has a 50% chance of transferring run random debuff from the champion to the target. From this champion to the target. So she will take a random debuff that is already on her and put it on them. 75% chance. You can already think of Lissandra that has a similar thing, but Lissandra transfers all, not just one random one. She also has a 50% chance of stealing a random buff. So she's taking a buff from the enemy, she's placing one debuff on them. So I don't know how I feel about that, but this will require accuracy. But you should know that this will always be useful for newer players coming into raid. Imagine you're starting raid with your kill, with your um, maybe you have your habitat by now, and you get a champion like this. This will always be useful for newer players and mid-game players. So take note, if you're a newer player, a free champion like this, you will always use them, even if it's just for this faction. Um, for the banner lots, you will use that for sure. That's not an easy faction to deal with. So I'm going to be looking at it mostly from the end game perspective, but I want to let you know that this champion was built or given for free by the raid um, developers to the community for newer and mid game players. This is not a champion they want to give to end game players like UDK, Ronda, and um, you know, there are others that have created end game players benefited a great deal from. I don't think she will be it. So, newer players, watch out and use her to the best of your ability. I'm already seeing her a def deficient in her A1 that transforms a random debuff. Why not just transfer all debuff from her to the uh, enemies? Because they don't want it to be too broken. Already, she's already stealing a random buff. So, that makes it okay, I guess. Steal a random buff, transfer a random debuff. It will need accuracy. It's not a 100% chance to land or to transfer, but it's a 75% chance when you spend books on it. Healing Script is a 4 turn cooldown skill when you spend booked on it. It's a 3 turn cooldown skill which will restore 25% of each ally's destroy max HP. You need that for a bunch of bosses which will destroy your max HP. Then heal all allies by 25% of this champion's max HP. So this is going to be one of the best ways to do healing in raid. If a champion, a healer especially, is healing based on, on her own max HP, that means she will just be you know, built with high levels of HP, 100k, 50k and above basically. And then she'll be able to doing a lot of healing based on her own max HP. She will restore, destroy max HP for content like the um, Sand Devil Necropolis where that boss destroys a lot of your max HP. This is the type of healing or the type of healer that will shine in that type of content. So we are glad to see them providing more ways that we can deal with it. Even the Hydra has some content where they destroy your max HP. Um, Fire Knight has content where they destroy your max HP. A lot of content in Raid these days is destroying your max HP. And so now restoring it is going to be a way that you can always stay in the battle for longer. So that's a useful heal. It's a massive heal and it does nothing else. A heal that is this huge doesn't need to do anything else. Basically, no buffs is added, added to it. Just pure healing. So, restore 25% of your allies with some max HP and also heals them by 25% of her own max HP. So, booster with a lot of HP. I'm thinking um, Immortal. <laughs> immortal set is the best way to go to reach those high HP numbers right here. When she's in the game, we'll test that out, we'll build her out and we'll see how this skill works. But for now, that's what I'm thinking once I see this. That's a good heal. You will not find this type of heal in an um, epic champion. So this is a legendary type of heal. If an epic, epic champion owns this type of heal, it will probably not restore 
25% off allies restore max HP. Or it will not have the two, both the heal and the restore. It will have only one for epic champions. But since the legendary, they added both. All right. Now that impressed me more than the A1, I'll be honest. Let's go over to the A3. Five turn cooldown. When you spend booked on it, it becomes a three turn cooldown. Will it be worth booking? The A2 is worth booking. The A1 is not worth booking. So hopefully you want your books to go to the A2. What about the A3? Right of Sleep has a 75% chance of placing Sleep Debuff. I thought it's Sheep. <laughs> Alright. Sleep Debuff on a target for one turn has a 75% chance also of placing Decrease Speed Debuff and a 50% Decrease Attack. Decrease Speed with Decrease Attack. Those two debuffs that you need in almost every content. Well, there, there are some content you can't do decrease speed, but you get what I'm saying. Is he on one target? As a sometimes percent of placing sleep duo on a target. So it's just one target. I thought it's gonna be an AoE decrease speed, AoE decrease attack. No. It's gonna be a single target decrease speed, a single target decrease attack debuff on the target for two turns. Debuffs placed by this skill will ignore any block debuff but still it's not an aoe so i don't know how i feel about this 75 percent chance of placing sleep debuff on a target for one turn so you have sleep decrease speed decrease attack and it ignores block debuff buff. i'm trying to think of where i'm going to use this sand devil necropolis that's a three turn cooldown sleep you have to wait for three turn for this sleep to come back the sleep is for one turn though. But it brings decrease speed, decrease attack. So against that one boss that you can place all these debuffs on, the three debuffs, sleep, decrease speed, and decrease attack can go on the Sand Devil Necropolis. But we have ways we're already dealing with that content. Will she be now the MVP because her A2 is already working fine for that content? So does that mean her A3 now works fine, perfectly fine in synergy with the A2 for that content also? She puts the boss to sleep, she heals your destroying max HP. She will be an MVP in the Sand Devil. Did they just build this champion for the Sand Devil? That's what I'm thinking. So early game players and mid game players hate Sand Devil because you can't deal with the boss. You have a rare champion who can put him to sleep, that's your best. You don't have a CF like endgame players who can build a full four-man team. You don't yet have your Godseeker and Niri and a good HP bond champion to do a two-man Sand Devil. So early game players kind of ignore Sand Devil. You just fight it to stage one to stage five. I guess this is a solution for you. If you're new to raid, you get this champion. Even if you're not started beating the clan boss at Ultra Nightmare or Nightmare, she just goes into the Sand Devil. With this skill, you can get up to stage 20. No, 20 is too much. Maybe stage 15 depends on your artifacts so i'm seeing everything that she's doing with this skill will be very very useful in the sand devil i'm thinking even if you don't want a mortal set on her for that a2 you can even go with a um, relentless set because of this a3 <laughs> or reflex set any any artifact that will make her take a lot of turns is what you need so she can repeat this skill again and put the boss back to sleep before he begins to do his big nooks three con three turn cooldown on that a and sleep that lasts for one turn though. I'm trying to think of places where this will also be useful. This is definitely not a Hydra skill because it's just one, one target decrease speed, one target decrease attack. That's not a Hydra that has four heads. Not a clan boss skill for sure. So where else? Which other boss? Decrease speed, decrease attack. That's um what do you call it now iron twins fortress that's one that these two work not the sleep but at least this decrease speed is useful in iron twins fortress decrease attack is needed in iron twins fortress also so the boss doesn't look you so hard so i found two content two bosses that are so difficult in raid that she will shine against that's amazing and when you use this champion against those same bosses you find them in the corset city she will be an mvp because she will be one of the few champions you can use that has this decrease speed and decrease attack. And I can also think of the um, Emus, the Lunar Archon. He needs decrease attack. Doesn't need a sleep though. Restore, destroy max HP, doesn't need it there. I'm just thinking of places where this will shine. But I'm saying 
early game players this is your solution to iron twins this is your solution to sand devil so i'm glad there are two places where she's mvp no hydra no clan boss dungeon bosses fire knight i mean fire knight yes it's a single target hit though it's not like a triple hit or something the first hit this does slip the second hit should do this then the third hit does decrease the attack it's not a triple hit it's just a one hit it should have been an aoe so so it's useful against wave but hey i guess he's not actually gonna do any damage because this doesn't hit this one hits one person now this one hits only one person it's not gonna be for the doing any damage at all so do not build this champion for damage so what do i think so far from my a1 o2 and a3 i think it's gonna be useful a lot in early to mid game and then in the end game when you come across those type of difficult bosses in um Sintranos, she will also be useful in that content i love it maybe some doom tower bosses will also benefit a great deal from decreased speed and decreased attack to be placed on them by her while healing all your allies a lot all right let's see from her passive um passive weakness a passive how did i put it the name is passive weakness but it's a passive that um deals what allies deal three percent more damage to targets for each debuff placed on them by this champion allies deal three percent more damage to target for each debuff placed on them placing sleep on the target I don't understand it. Allies deal 3% more damage to targets, that's to enemies, for each debuff placed on them by this champion. So, if the enemies have decreased speed and decreased attack, that's 6% damage increase. So, my allies will do 6% more damage if the enemies have two debuffs from her decrease speed and decrease attack those are the only two things you can really place on them but if you come in across those bosses that i don't i can't count sleep because once you hit him the sleep will just wake the boss up so that doesn't count so that's six percent more damage from that passive it's it's not an impressive passive but she's just adding a little bit of damage to the battle i guess i had to read that again and again to really understand i thought it was saying she's gonna place the boss on us no 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 it's the boss on the enemies you gain six percent more if you have two of these debuffs i don't think there's any condition where you'll be able to place only decrease speed or decrease attack depends on maybe you get three percented or something increase ally accuracy in all battles by 60. all battles um, is perfect that means this champion can be used in the um, leader slot in all other areas to make sure she has another enough accuracy especially the early game to land this amazing debuff which will increase your damage hey everyone We've got a very special sneak peek for you today. Our focus is on an exciting upcoming event that's all about you, the community. Introducing Community Weeks. What exactly is Community Weeks? Well, spanning almost a full month, this event celebrates you. We'll have a few different activities happening throughout that time, so let's dive in and see what's coming. We're kicking things off with a free legendary champion, yep. Nate Chronicler Aidlin. Them, proving that the pen can be mightier than the sword. Adolin is made even more special by the fact that she can bypass the block debuffs buffs when placing her own debuffs. Yeah, I guess that's one thing I failed to mention. But the thing is, since it's going to be against waves, I mean, it's, it's going to be against bosses. It doesn't matter if she bypasses block debuff buff. As you can see, it's only landing on one enemy. Now, if this was an AoE skill, then we can say it's amazing. But why is it bypassing block debuff buff when it's not going to be used against wave content? That's what I'm thinking. Now, this is not a skill you want to use against wave. It's going to be useful more against the bosses. And bosses do not have block debuff buff. The ones I just talked about, the Sun Devil and the um, other boss don't have these two these things so that's why i'm thinking it's not going to be useful in that content as usual let me know if i'm wrong i just see i thought about it but now they explained it again that's why when i was reading out our skills i didn't really focus more on this the fact that it has ability to bypass block debuff buff. 
but that's not the main selling point. The selling point of this skill is it brings decreased speed and decreased attack to bosses, not wave content. Because it cannot be spread against all other allies or anything, it's just on one enemy. So that's not a good reason to use that skill. Debuffs. She can also restore destroyed HP and put enemies to sleep without hitting them. She's gonna slot right into your Sand Devil teams. Look out, Alname. Adlin's coming for you. Okay, the A3 does not hit at all. It doesn't hit at all. So that decreased speed and decreased attack will be landing a lot easier even against negative affinity bosses. Because it doesn't hit. The A3 doesn't hit. The A2 doesn't hit. Only the A1 hits. So this slip will be landing as long as you have enough accuracy. Nice to know. Thank, good, uh, thank goodness I watched their video. Let's keep going. Getting your hands on Adlin couldn't be easier. You just need to log in for seven different days between That's April it. 11th and July 8th. But for Community Weeks, we're taking it to the next level. This isn't your average login reward program. There. All right, that's what I'm talking about. It's not just logging in and getting her. As you log in daily and get her, you also get these artifacts right above me, right? So she's going to be needing accuracy. So they came along with perception, which is a nice one. I'm glad this time around they didn't give us accuracy set because that's too basic. Perception is what we get along with this champion, which you can put on her immediately and get enough accuracy to be doing crazy things from her A3 and her A1. And then the extra rewards for 14 days login. I can take my set out of the way. That's energy, multi battles, 50k, silver. And then on the 14th day, you got a two star perfect soul. So it's not a four star perfect soul like I thought. <laughs> They don't want to be that generous, but maybe phase two will have something more. Let's see what phase two holds for us. 14 days worth of login rewards, double the amount as usual, including a rank two perfect soul for Adlin and so mm. much more. Mm. And that's just phase one. So that rank two is mainly for beginner players. Like I said, this is like targeted at beginner to mid game players because even getting a rank one perfect soul for her is going to be difficult for newer players. So two star perfect soul is amazing for a new player that you just obtain for free something you can most likely not even get from farming that um content for that long or checking the author or so so you might not get it for a long time but you're getting it for free so that's amazing that they added it along phase two only starts once you've claimed all 14 rewards available in phase one in mm -hmm. phase two you'll simply need to earn points that's what i wanted to see that's the one that is for end game players because we end game players we appreciate this type of champions or this type of gifts when you give us <laughs> something more so i'm saying a three star four star and a five star perfect so what do you have to do to get them campaign dungeons faction wars faction wars <laughs> all right that's new that's different Endpoints by winning battles in faction wars. I guess that's why this type of reward rewards is targeted at end game players. What do we have to do in the faction wars? I can't wait to see. Fight, defeat five bosses in faction wars. What about those who have not taken beating faction wars seriously or taken it seriously up till now? What do we have to? What do they have to do? They can't complete those points, I guess. And then finally, clan boss and arena. That's gonna be easy campaign is going to be easy dungeons is going to be easy there but faction wars is just a new one that i've never seen being part of one of these type of events but it's not a titan event like we expected it to be it's a new type of event called adline chase and it will be here let's see if you to come up with special events and tournament also points by winning battles in multiple different game modes over the next three weeks mm -hmm. each milestone you reach with points will unlock even more rewards including split souls to get Adolin to level 5 of Awakening. Oh, and one more thing. If you don't claim all the rewards from Phase 1 before July 8th, they'll be replaced with the equivalent reward, but for the epic orc champion, Shaman. You will miss out on a unique Adolin themed avatar though, so be sure to log in and get those rewards. Getting a free legendary champion is pretty cool, but what about helping to create one? Meet Vault Keeper Wixwell. He's going to be your May Fusion champion. But there's something a little special about him. You're going to be voting on his skill set. There's going to be four rounds of voting between April 11th and April 25th, where you'll get to vote between three options for each of his four. So the voting doesn't start today. Today we're just explaining his skills from 
what is available what they made available to us is this graphic right here for um his a3 skill and i thought i'll be able to speak it today but today we can just discuss which one will be the best way to go for him but let's finish with the video before i decide on how i want to go about this vault keeper weeks well a3 skill and uh, tomorrow we can vote for it but i will already decide in this video and then maybe i'll do it offline for skills each round will feature a damage focused option a support focused option and a defense focused option for you to vote on the first round will be for Wixwell's third active skill, which will act as the cornerstone of his kit. After that, you'll then vote on his second active skill, then his default skill, and finally, his passive skill. The details of when each round of voting takes place is on screen now. Mark your calendars and get campaigning. Wixwell could be a crazy combination of attack, defense, and support, or a perfect hybrid. It's all up to you. When will you find out the results? Well, glad you asked. Vault yeah. Keeper Wixwell's skills will be revealed after another major component of Community Weeks. Our first ever Raid Community Awards Show. This is a glitzy awards ceremony, celebrating those who made the biggest impact on the game in 2023. We couldn't have a Community Awards Show without our community choosing some of the winners. As part of the Raid Community Awards, we're giving you the chance to vote for the winners in one particular category, the Community Choice Awards. Between April 10th and April 25th, you'll be able to vote on several categories that will all feature in the community. So that's the one that is open right now. And that's the one I have the link for that I was about to vote for and choose. So tomorrow we'll do for weeks well, but today we can choose the community awards votes. And um, it's open 10th already. The choice section of the Raid Community Awards. Don't worry about missing out. We'll put the links all over social media and in the game itself. We've already got our nominee shortlist sorted, with fan artists, meme makers, cosplayers, and content creators all getting their moment in the spotlight. You can only cast a single vote for each award, so choose carefully. The Raid Community Awards will premiere on the official Raid Zula. YouTube channel on May 3rd, so grab your best tuxedos and ball gowns. The show will also include some fun facts about Raid over the years, as well as some surprise guests. All right, that's enough spoilers. We can't wait to see you there. And that's it for today's sneak peek. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and keep an eye out for any Community Weeks announcements. I'm off to get my text from the dry cleaners. See you next time. So that's basically all the news we were sharing yesterday and today all put into, good, into one raid video. So let me go ahead and vote for my Community Choice Awards votes. And first of all, let me copy my UM code in-game because I think that's what will be required for you to vote. Where is it? Player info? No. Info. Copy ID. And vote. Enter player ID. What's my username? OC Bricks 5D. The player ID should be enough. Why, why does it also need username? Only verified player can take part. Also fill in uh, the form below. Player ID and raid nickname. Do I have to enter the OC part? OC space bricks 5D, I guess. Some players are using very complicated special characters for their um, username. That's why I'm saying if that's even needed. Because it's gonna make it a little bit difficult to type but that's mine OC Bricks 5D alright now I can cast votes on a single nominee for each character uh, for, this, for each category don't forget to hit the submit button submit your votes once you're, you've made your selection fan art of the year let's view the options I'm not really part of this community i don't know anybody on this list right here but i'll just select based on the one that i like definitely not this dude because he's almost impossible for anybody to get this is a handcrafted one this is this all these ones are drawing or digital drawings i'll go with the handcrafted one because i feel like that's gonna take a longer longer time longer efforts to make so 
you can also read more about it see it looks like it's somebody that knows what he's doing and has been doing this type of job for a long time let me go ahead and vote for that and next vote for single nominee in each category which category is this meme of the year all right i'm also not in touch of with any of these memes so it might be hard to make a selection right here but let me select based on the champion or do i can i find out more about the meme okay we can read about the meme and know know which one is the best mom i wish dad was with us this christmas i know darling but dad is working hard doing three dungeon diverse events for the fusion <laughs> All right, I like this one already. I like this one already. I feel like there's not going to be a better meme that will be better than this. But let me just take a look at the other ones. I was a terror in arena back in my day. Sure, Tommen. Let's get it. Tommen is still good today. Today. So I don't think this is... This is... um Accurate. It's still a terror to deal with. At least in offense battle. So this one is, will not be the winner for me. I feel like Tommen, I just got him recently, I guess. I've not enjoyed him. That's why I'm thinking this way. Kill. Elhane and Gilek. Play around making breakfast for their children. They took away from Elhane and gave it to Kill. And they are sharing the crumbs. This is accurate, at least for the newer player. Um, perspective kill is eating good <laughs> while the others are just struggling this is accurate also nice meme 2x playroom is dragging in 2x on what do you call it primal shards but all you're gonna get from the 2x on primal shards according to this meme is res the epic you already have and more rares. I can't relate because I've never pulled any of my primary shard up to today. I have 52 right now. So that's good. So this is this is accurate. Very accurate about 2x on primal, but I cannot relate. So let's see. UDK meme. Who else built Ultimate Death Knight? So basically, Sifi and Rotos are pissed off at Ultimate Death Knight. That's what this meme is looking at. That's accurate, at least for the PvP meta. Great content creators trying to produce a video guide for Hard Fire Night 10. Team is only 62% win rate. Waiting for your mods to improve your team. Run takes 14. <laughs> Deciding to just upload a shadow. <laughs> All right, I also relate with this one, but it's not accurate. It's not accurate. Whoever sees a 62% win rate will not put out that video. It will be one of those videos where you just say, yes, I did it in one minute, but it's not what you actually farm. I can beat Fire Knight hard 10, but I don't farm it because it's a 90%. Okay, yes, I did put out a video about Fire Knight hard 10, but I don't farm it. So this is, I guess this is very, very accurate, but I don't wait for mods to make improvements to the team for me to now i wait on the entire community at large not just mods anybody else that makes improvement i go look at what they are doing and make improvement to my team so it's not just mod the run doesn't take 49 minutes nobody records that type of video even if we shall we can record it and fast forward the entire video it becomes a three minute video for you but it was a 30 minutes video for us anyways I still think the first one is the accurate one. Why? Because we are still asking for Raid to do something about Dungeon Divers, but instead they keep boosting the amount of points we have to. As I speak right now, I have Dungeon Divers to do. And Dragon will end. Dungeon Divers will just be sitting here looking at me like you've not even started. So I can finish this Dragon right now and Dungeon Divers will be at 1650. So still a long way to go for this ongoing fusion. So I think this will be the most accurate one for me for memes. Wow, well, that took a lot of time because I had to study the memes. But hopefully, this helps you helped you decide which meme is the best one you want to vote for. 
decide on your own though don't go by what i do I, you know everybody has their own different type of um what they like and what they find fun and this one is for cosplay best cosplay 2023 um leila fox is the only name i know on this list unfortunately so i'm just gonna go leila because she's she has been killing it all this time that's uh what's her name now this a1 decrease are those her arms or this digital is it digitally made or was that actually shoulder blade thing she put on i don't know but anyways i'm gonna vote for that one you can check out this other rojin cosplay this person went all out made the entire fire knight costume Is this real or digital? That's a lot of effort. Even the eyes, that's a lot of effort. If it's just real and maybe a few things was added in digital. I hope the face was actually not digital. Dodo cosplay. Amazing Sky, uh, Sky Touch Shaman cosplay right here. But I'm still going for Layla because I'm biased like that. You can choose for any other person that you enjoy their cosplay. I know others did it better, but let's go for Layla instead. Then, content creator of the year. Uh, I'm going to give it to Nobraid because Nobraid has been killing it this year. The Hell Hate team are doing crazy things, yes, but Nobraid is like. You watch a Nobraid's video and you're like, hmm. Maybe I should have said that in my video. <laughs> yeah, Nobraid goes in great detail. He doesn't miss anything and it's always fun to watch. So I'm going to give it to Nobraid for the content creator of the year. And also not because he's in the raid um, community awards show either. It's just his content in general is getting better and better and better. The Hell Hate team as a whole, they are always amazing and Nobrace has joined the L Hate team but L Hate in L Hate is getting really really busy but when it does find out the time to make content it's still top notch especially whenever they put out those um, five members or five um, new champions just came out they have access to the test server to test them out in great detail and tell us how they perform i love those great detailed video too that they, that he puts out and let's not forget about Ash. Ash is doing a lot of collaborations this time around. I'm seeing Ash collaborate with even the free to play. He collaborated with Boozer. I think I watched it. I watched two, three videos like that that they put out so far. And it's amazing to see, you know, Ash getting get um, in touch with those type of content also. And not just end game shot pool videos that we love to see from Ash. But now we are seeing different type of content, more collaborations from Ash. And it's really, really fun to watch. He knows how to make his guests feel welcome and, and yeah so ash doesn't doesn't need content creator of the year he 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 knows he's a good content creator and hate is fine with not winning but no rates he's gonna appreciate it so much so let's just give it to no rates but choose whoever you want all right streamer of the year final Kempachi is the one that i see every time i come on twitch that's the best person i go to and i watch his content he streams every day i think every day of the week he's live and i think on sundays he plays an entirely different game so i enjoy his content and yeah and he's also free to play like me and he helps a lot of community members with their um, account takeovers advice there's no message you put out in his chat that he will not respond so despite how busy the chat will get he always keeps in touch with his chat so that's final kempachi i i to be fair, I'm not I've not really watched any of these other uh, streamers, but Anna Kempachi is always live. If I go over to Twitch right now, let's see if he's even live right now. Twitch Rage Shallow Legends. Anna Kempachi. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> is he live? There he is. <laughs> I told you he's always right there doing his thing. Anna Kempachi. And yeah, I think I subscribed. Okay, I already used my free monthly subscription for somebody else so that's why he's getting my votes it's not because in the content creator program it's not because it's just the one i watch whenever i go on twitch and then um, 
and it's free to play also and is that it top non-english top non-english speaking content creators how am i supposed to know their content well in this case since i don't know any of these non-english speaking content creators like i don't consume their content i'm gonna vote for them based on who is most popular and let's give it up to fab stuff because of the amazing tool that he puts out for us the raid solo legends helper that's the only reason why i'm choosing uh, fab stuff i've not really watched any of their content because it's non-english speaking right but for the tools they provide let me just give it to fab stuff that might not be the reason why he's on this category but i'm voting based on who i know i guess strategy master and let's give that to bronco dead dude shiny the problem with this category is that there are so many they are so different deadwood for the clan boss shiny for the pvp arena end game content i mean yes arena live arena that's shiny bronco for end game pve content i'm talking about solo this solo that three man team two man team best way to beat this boss I've learned a lot from Bronco's videos and I just look at it and build those teams and it works perfectly for me. Even if I don't put out the content, most of my new builds, especially for the Sand Devil Necropolis, I mean, for the um, City of Centranos that he always comes up with new teams that can help us beat those difficult stages, including the boss, Amius. I see a lot of Bronco's videos these days for that content. So for that reason, I'll give it to Bronco because of his content is top you know, this time around. Clan boss is still for me, no improvement. And I'm not yet focused on PvP, so Shini will come out later and scratch. Um, I used to enjoy a lot of scratch videos when I was trying to beat dungeons at the highest level, hard mode. But these days, I don't know. So let's just give it to Bronco because he's new to this um, contest. And after voting, they say, don't forget to submit. Where is the submit button? next is that it view all categories let me see if my votes counted it, it did count so i have to go all the way back before i hit submit that's a flaw the submit should have been right here at the end when i finish here just put the submit button down here so everybody sees it because most people will not remember to go back to view all categories and then scroll all the way down to hit submit your vote. I guess they made it that way in case you wanted to change your mind and that's who I voted for. So yeah. Is there any other news or information that I needed to share with you guys? I'll put the link to this um, voting page in the top pinned comment like I said so you guys can go over there and vote based on your own favorite streamers, meme of the year, fan art, content creator of the year. A streamer of the year non-english speaking category and master strategy strategy master category right here all right i'll end it right here i don't think there's any other information that raid is going to drop in the uh, discord right now i just wanted to check again to see did i talk about the skills of this champion i did not well raid already talked about it but let me just explain a little bit what i i meant to share about this new champion tomorrow when his um skills come out and you want to vote for it take note that he has a unique skill that we've never seen where well, it's not that it's not a skill it's a buff that we've never seen in raid before he is the first champion that is coming up with this buff in raid so that's kind of very very unique and nice to see if you're going to vote for him as a damage dealer he was going to be placing a um, damage on one enemy will ignore stone skin buff and then if this attack kills the target fills this champion to meter by 50 percent that's not a very strong damage skill it's a single target tar target hit on the a3 remember you're voting for the a3 first on the 11th and then if you're gonna vote for him as a defense focused champion there is this new buff yes that's a new buff you're seeing right here it's called intercept it places two intercept stacks on a target ally when you see two stacks it means it's gonna be one intercept and it has two on it this new intercept what does it do what does it do it's like block the buff buff you know how it can make you not receive a stun those it can make you not receive any debuff when you have block debuff buff just like stone skin right you can not really place it on any any um on the ally when they have that buff that's what i'll compare this intercept with but let me read it according to how raid 
said it is so i don't make any mistake in when i'm explaining it for you guys basically intercept buff will block any attempt to place crowd control debuff on a champion so if i have intercept buff on myself or my allies it will block any attempt you try to place sleep stun freeze provoke fear through fear petrification and ship debuff it will stop it from landing just like block debuff buff but what makes it so different from block debuff buff is that it's it's not the same each intercept stack will block one attempt at placing a crowd control after the attempt one intercept stack will be removed remember when you have block debuff buff for two turns they try to stun you it's still two turns they try to provoke you it's still two turns except you get a turn that's when it counts down to one more turn right for the um, intercept it's only when you are tried um, they attempt to stun you that it will now be reduced or one stack will fall off so i guess if you have intercept buff on you you take five turns you still have the two stacks of intercept is that what they're trying to say i think so the inter intercept buff has no duration and they will, therefore cannot have its duration increased or decreased the intercept buff also cannot be spread to ally champions so it cannot be spread like other um buffs that you place on yourself we have to wait until we see it in battle to really understand it but all i can tell you about this new buff is that it's like block debuff buff is but it's very different it doesn't work the same way you cannot increase it you cannot reduce it you cannot i don't think you can remove it it doesn't say if it can be removed except you play stun on the champion so i guess it's a new buff but it's not like crazy 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 good it's only viable for champions who want to stun you you know immunity or um block debuff buff will stop decrease defense decrease attack it will stop other debuffs not only control crash control debuffs so this intercept buff it's only targeted to stopping crowd control buffs I mean, crowd control debuffs that the enemies are trying to place on you. So it's very, very niche. If you're trying to fight some battles and you're bringing this champion and in that battle, there is no stun, there is no provoke, there is no... you. Then what's the point of intercept buff? So, so there will be areas where you can use it. There will be areas where it will be just useless. There will be areas where block debuff buff will be better than intercept buff. So... It also places a 60% increased defense and shield on all allies for two turns. So I know a lot of people will look at intercept and like, oh, new buff, oh, new buff. But guess what? <laughs> it's not gonna stop decrease defense, decrease attack, decrease speed. It's not gonna stop um, block buff debuff. It's not gonna stop a lot of things. So let's not hype this new buff higher than block debuff buff let's not hype it higher than stone skin which we already know has a limitation but you know what i mean so let me know what you think about this new buff and then let me know what whether you're going for this damage focus defense focus or support focus as for the support focus um champion skill for this champion i know i'm, I'm covering it a little bit but it's gonna be revives all dead allies with 50 percent hp and 50 percent turn meter it doesn't say how many turn cooldown is it a three turn cooldown or two turn cooldown because a normal revive it's not enough it will also place five percent poison debuff on all enemies for two turns just the poison the number of poison debuff placed on each target is equal to the number of allies revived <laughs> that's unique you have to revive in order to place poison if you don't revive you place only one poison i don't know <laughs> i thought this champion was gonna be crazy good but his a3 is very very confusing right now i can't decide i like the fact that that's a new um buff and if he's gonna be the first champion to have this intercept buff that means there'll be other champions in the future that will come along with this buff or maybe epic champions will have it but so far it's not looking like it's a very very crazy good buff to have because it's not going to be used everywhere it's going to have its limitations only when you're going to use it use it against enemies who have 
crowd control coming in. So I'm gonna go for I don't have I don't need revives. I have a lot of revivers. A reviver that places poison. I guess this type of reviver can be used in City of Centranos. It has very, very niche uses. I'm leaning towards damage focus, but we already have a lot of damage dealers who are ignoring stone skin. I beg, this video has gone long enough. I just wanted to explain this intercept buff well a, a little bit for you guys. Hopefully, when it comes into the game, you guys can take a better look at it and decide. But for now, I'm leaning towards this one because it's new. Defense focused um, champion. And that's what I'm thinking. I will vote tomorrow when that voting opens. I'll end it right here. Sorry, this one was too long, but there was a lot to cover. Hopefully, you guys don't mind. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Please like, subscribe for more daily raid content. Later, guys. And tell me in the comments which of these May Fusion skills are you voting for for his A3? Are you going with the intercepts, defense focus, or are you leaning towards damage focus? Or do you like revivers who are not doing heals when they are revived, but they are doing poisons on the enemy? That means he's going to be a reviver that needs accuracy. <laughs> Alright guys, later.